Well, Jake, thanks again for joining us, sir. Really appreciate it. Mm, thank you very much, Cam, for having me tonight. You bet. Uh, so we've been following this story for the past couple of uh, work days anyway, what's going on with uh, Citibank, uh, Home Depot, and uh, a Warren Scope Mounts company out of Oregon. Uh, just a little bit of background. The uh, company applied for line of credit with uh, Home Depot, initially was approved, then uh, they were rejected the next day. Turns out uh, the, the, the explanation they got was, well, it's because of the industry that you're in. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now we, we find out it's not really Home Depot that, uh, that, that, that is to blame for this. It's the company that uh, provides the, the credit uh, for Home Depot customers. That's Citibank. And, Jake, you know, we've seen some problems with Citibank in the past in, uh, in, in, in the gun industry. Yes, in the past, actually, back in, uh, whew, what, I guess two years ago now, um, there's a situation with Citibank and their uh, declining of any any uh, firearms transactions um, that were non face to face. As you know, uh, you can do a non face to face transaction through the internet or through various sites, and as long as it clears through an FFL and you do the background check, um, they were obviously ignorant to uh, to the regulations and the federal regulations, and started to decline transactions for merchants uh, that were involved with online sales. Uh, so that that goes back all the way to 2007 um, and, and even 2008, where they were continuing to do this, uh, and that was Citibank or Citi, depending on uh, on uh, what branch of it. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, you know, it, it seems like the anti-gun policy hasn't, you know, disappeared. I mean, this is a situation that we heard of just last week, where you got a, a scope manufacturer that is applying for a line of credit at Home Depot. To purchase materials not for their business, not to not not to make scopes, but for you know for other activities or for other business opportunities. Right. And uh, you know, Home Depot okay's it. It seems to be approved. Yet the next day after it, I'm sure it goes through the proper channels at Citibank and City. It comes back as being uh, you know be, being denied because of the industry they're associated with. Yeah. All right. So what have we found out about this? Because, I mean, in the past couple of years, uh, as you say, we've, you know, we've, we've seen this kind of pop up. NRA ILA uh, had to deal with uh, Citibank a couple of years ago. We talked last week with Rich Grassy from uh, the Tactical Wire, who's been uh, uh, working on this. And, and and the last time we talked, it looked like this may have been a a, a coding issue. Uh, is that still what we're thinking, or or is this a little bit deeper than that? Uh, we're doing some further investigation, you know, as a trade association you know, for companies like this that that you know work in the industry. We we need to be sure that it is not. You know, we're hearing various things, like you said, whether it was a coding issue or you know they're put into the wrong industry. But you know, we know going back to when uh, everyone battled with Citibank before that they threw the firearms industry you know, into, you know, I guess you could say unsavory industries. Uh, you know, they, it includes the you know, check cashing places and pawn shops and even the porn industry is, is you know, they, they threw the firearms industry in with those other three. Um, so even if it is a coding issue where this was miscoded, mm -hmm. um, do they still have that policy where they include the firearms industry, which based upon the letters that, you know, Rich Grassy received, I, are we still included in that, you know, in those classifications? And, and if we are, can we find a way to say, to have Citibank take a step back and say, you know, wait, maybe we shouldn't be classifying you, you guys in this. I mean, with the economic, with the economy the way it is, I mean, we all know Citibank received government funds. You would think they'd want a, you know, a prospering industry like the firearms industry the past two years. They'd be willing to extend credit, but I guess they just like taxpayer money to bail them out. Yeah, well, I, I guess so. And, uh, you know, you, you mentioned the fact that uh, City, uh, you know, took this taxpayer money. Now, obviously, their problems go back to before the uh, the bailout. Do we see this? Uh, is this common? Is this really rare, Jake, that we see, uh, you know, uh, firearms-related industries, firearms-related businesses, um, I mean, you know, I don't want to use the word uh, discrimination, but 
uh, singled out, let's say? Well, uh, the, the problem you run into is nowadays, uh, you know, there's too many, uh, I don't need to tell you, there's too many lawyers out there <laughs> and too many gen- general counsels that, that, you know, of course don't want to get involved in, in various industries. And they think the firearms industry, you know, the, the first thing they think about is, is being somehow liable for um, something that takes place. Now, are these overzealous general counsels at Citibank saying, let's just not get involved or do this? I don't know. I mean, that that's going to take a little bit more further investigation on our part to uh, to get inside Citibank and say, you know, you know, what's going on with this? Why would you be concerned with an industry that's federally regulated um, and, and you know has has a an agency in Washington D.C. focused on uh, overseeing yeah. you know, transactions throughout the U.S. Absolutely. Well, Jake, again, appreciate you coming on the program, and uh, let us know if you get any updates, will you? Well, I appreciate it. That's, uh, you know, we're in the process of looking into this even further. I mean, unfortunately, this keeps popping its head up. I mean, we, we thought we were done with it before, but Citibank never changed its policy, and, you know, it rears its ugly head again now. All right. Jake McGuigan with the National Shooting Sports Foundation. Thanks again for your time, Jake. Talk to you again soon. Thank you.